What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi coach and give me six months of your time and I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So if you ever wondered to yourself, how long should a swing change actually take? Well, this is going to be the perfect video for you. In this video, we're going to detail exactly, depending on what swing mechanics you're working on, as well as how much time you have to practice, exactly how long it should take to complete your swing change. So if you're interested in that, well, let's go ahead and get into the video. But before we get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is the Kiwi Coach six month program, but more on that later. So to start off this video, I wanna go over some basic terminology so we can all be on the same page before we start getting into the main points of this video. So the first terminology I wanna discuss is gonna be a position, and a position can be summed up from position one through position 10. So set up, take away, top of the swing, uh, let's say lead arm parallel and down swing, impact, those would all be examples of positions. The next terminology I wanna discuss is gonna be a checkpoint. So typically a checkpoint is within the position. So at set up, let's say how far apart your feet are, that would be a checkpoint. Or how much you have tilt with the upper body, that would be a checkpoint. If we go to position four, let's say elbow rotation at the top of the swing, that would be a checkpoint. So I'm hoping you guys are starting to understand the differences between position and checkpoint. And now let's get into the last terminology of the video. So the last terminology you need to understand is gonna be what a motion is. And a motion is gonna be a sequence of positions as well as a multitude of checkpoints. To give an example of this, let's take a look at the hand path throughout the backswing. So the positions that the hand path would be moving through is all the way from position one to position four. And then the checkpoints it would be moving through is gonna be hand positioning at position two, hand positioning at position three, and then hand positioning at position four. So motion, again, remember, is a sequence through all the positions as well. You're gonna have multiple checkpoints that you have to look at when you're trying to see if you're doing that motion correct. So transitioning into kind of the main points of this video, the first main point when it comes to the motions, are there different types of motions that you need to worry about? Some people need to worry about the hand path motions. Some people need to worry about the club shaft motions. Some people need to worry about maybe the elbow motions, maybe the shoulder motions, maybe the sequence of rotation motions. There's a lot of different motions that different people need to worry about. And depending on which ones you need to work on for your particular swing, it's going to to take different amounts of times to fix them. To give you a basic example of this, let's take the hand path motion on the backswing as well as the club shaft motion on the backswing. Because those two are pretty close together and the motion is pretty much gonna be the same, it's probably not gonna take as long for you to complete that as opposed to, let's say, working on the hand path motion and then working on the knee motion with the left knee on the backswing. Because those are two kind of separate movements and they're kind of moving independently of each other, it's gonna take a whole lot longer to fix those because they are independent, right? So it's more difficult to work on them at once. You're probably gonna to have to separate them. Hence, it's gonna take a lot more time to complete than just changing the hand path motion and the club shaft motion. So if you guys didn't catch that, motions that go together are going to be completed much quicker than motions that are separate from each other. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna go over a few more examples for you guys. I'm not gonna go over every single case because again, that would be a long, long video and not a lot of you guys would really get that much value out of it besides maybe you instructors out there. So that's why lessons are always the best so we can really kind of tailor it for you individually. But I'll give you guys a few more examples so you guys can kind of start to get more and more of a picture. So let's start off with some motions that don't work together. A great example that comes to mind where oftentimes a lot of you guys out there do need to work on this is going to be when you need to move the hand path more behind you or vertically down and then at the same time you have to have left side lateral bend in transition. So because the left side lateral bend is moving you towards the golf ball and then the hand path moving behind you is moving you behind the golf ball, those are two different directions that you're trying to move two different body parts you're trying to move. So it'd be pretty difficult to do that in a short period of time for a lot of you guys out there. So hence, this would be another example of something taking a long time to fix. Another example of two separate motions would be when you're trying to steep in the club shaft from position five because you're too far underneath the plane, but at the same time, not trying to early rotate as much, right? Trying to kind of minimize your early rotation or have a little bit later sequence of rotation. So the sequence of rotation, because you're trying to minimize that, you're actually not trying to rotate, right? Which is moving in the opposite direction of the steepening motion. So those are moving in two opposite directions as well as there are two different 
different body parts. So it's another example of two motions that are gonna be difficult to do at once. So now let's give you a few examples of some motions that kind of go together and they're gonna be a lot quicker for you to fix. The best example that comes up in my mind is gonna be trying to get this troll elbow to externally rotate in transition while you're trying to flatten the club shaft. So if you're someone that's kind of doing this in transition, right, internally rotating the elbow and steepening the club shaft, well, the opposite would be moving this elbow into external rotation while flattening. Because really, the motions are moving in the same direction, it's really easy for you to do. Now, they are two separate body parts that you're trying to change, but they're moving in the same direction. So it's gonna be quite easy for you guys to fix compared to the other ones that I brought up in this video. Another example that comes to mind is gonna be in the takeaway section. If you're trying to move the hands inside and move the club head inside in that takeaway section, because maybe before your hands were way too far outside and your club head was way too far outside, that would be another motion where you're working on two separate body parts, but the overall direction is moving in the same way, so it's quite easy to do. So it's really almost feeling like it's just one motion that's fixing it as opposed to two separate motions. So it's gonna be quicker for you to fix. So I hope you guys are seeing the trend here. Whenever there's two separate body parts, that's gonna add some complexity to the swing change as well. If it's two separate body parts that are moving in two different directions, that's gonna add the most amount of complexity to the swing change. It's gonna take the longest for you guys to actually change. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, hey, Kiwi Coach, I understand like certain motions that are separate from each other are gonna be more difficult. Other motions that are a little bit more together are gonna be a lot easier to do. But still, you know, how long should it take me? Like, what should I expect? So I'm gonna start going into kind of how many golf balls you probably need to hit before you can get the movements done at a subconscious level. And then based off how many golf balls you need to hit, as well as how many positions or motions you need to change, as well as how much time you have to practice, we can start kind of coming up with an idea of how long the swing change could potentially take. So this first example, we're gonna give you guys maybe an easy example to start off with. Let's say that you really just need to have two motions change on the backswing, and both of those motions kind of go together, so it's pretty easy for you to change them. And then also on the downswing, you need two motions as well that you need to change, and then those two motions kind of go together so it's easy to change them. So in that case, you can kind of work on those two motions together. So it's actually only like you have two motions you need to change to get your swing to where you want it to be. So for each motion, you can expect that it's gonna take you about a thousand golf balls to become subconsciously competent with each motion. And then on top of that, you're probably gonna need another thousand golf balls to be able to do both of the motions at once. So in total, that's gonna to be roughly right around 3,000 golf balls. Once you have that information, now it's just trying to figure out how many golf balls you typically hit per month. Let's say you hit 1,000 golf balls per month. Well, you can expect that it's probably gonna take around three months for you to get all of the changes that you need to get done in this particular example. If you only hit 100 golf balls a month, that might take you 30 months to complete everything that you need to complete to get done with the swing change. So again, the last part is really dependent on you and how much time you have to practice, right? So that's something you should also start thinking about as well. Now, let's do a similar example as the last one, except for instead of them being easy and kind of moving together, we're going to say that they're moving separately now. So because they're moving separately now, you still have four motions you have to change, but you're not gonna be able to combine the motions because they're not moving kind of in the same way, they're moving opposite. So instead of having, let's say, 3,000 golf balls, well now you're gonna to have to hit 4,000 golf balls plus the extra 2,000 to kind of get all of them to work together, and that could be upwards of 6,000 golf balls you're gonna to need to hit because the movements are a lot more complex now for you to do. So in this case, if you hit 1,000 golf balls per month, you can expect that it's gonna take roughly right around six months of time for you to get through all of the motions that you're trying to change. If you only hit, let's say, 100 golf balls a month, well, it's gonna take a whole lot longer. I'm not gonna do the math in my head. Maybe the subtitle will put the number somewhere here, but it's a lot longer than six months, right? So again, it always comes down to how many golf balls you can hit and how much time you have, and then also add in kind of the complexity of the motions that you're trying to change in your golf swing. So based off my history of teaching, I'd say a lot of you guys out there are probably gonna fall under the category of four complex motions that you guys need to change. Typically, there's two complex motions on the backswing and then two complex motions on the downswing. So for most of you guys out there, if you hit a thousand golf balls a month, it's probably gonna take you roughly right around that six month period for you guys to actually change your swing 
exactly the way you want to do it. Now, even if you can hit a thousand golf balls per month, let me put this kind of special little notice here. If you don't practice correctly and you're not videoing and you're not kind of going through our implementation process and the steps that we tell you to do, it's going to take a whole lot longer, right? Because you're just going to be practicing poor repetition as opposed to good repetition with good checkpoints and motions. But in general, I can say quite confidently, a lot of you guys can expect anywhere from six months to a year to change your guys' golf swings as long as you guys kind of follow the protocol that we tell you to do in lessons and then make sure that you are not trying to add on separate swing motions and separate checkpoints that you guys like to do in between lessons as well. So I hope this video is quite informative for you guys. I know it's not going to be the answer for everyone, but hopefully I gave you guys some basic parameters to kind of work off of to where you can kind of narrow down and get some type of idea of exactly how long it's going to take you to change your own golf swing. Now, if you guys are struggling with this and you guys want an actual professional golf instructor to help you out with that, well, this is where the Kiwi Coach six month program comes into play. We have created a six month program where we can take your swing from where it currently is and then take your swing all the way to the goals that you wanted to take it within. On our website, you can go ahead and click on the link down below and you can see exactly what we're going to be discussing in each lesson for the six lessons and then go from there. Make sure to pick out the location you want, pick out the amount of lessons you want to take per month, sign up so we can help you out. So go check out that Kiwi Coach six month program, like, comment, subscribe, share all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video.